Zoom has come out with its earnings and we have to discuss it. And the reason we have to discuss this is because if you don't buy Zoom and I don't buy Zoom and none of us buy Zoom, but Kathy Wood keeps buying Zoom and Zoom goes to her projections of $1,500 a share by 2026. That means there's a 12X here that all of us are going to be missing out of, which is why it's important to analyze the stock because it's like, hey, wait a second, I want to get a 12X. And it's like, are they doing anything to justify a 12X? Well, let's see. Zoom earnings, they beat their EPS by 27%. So $1.07 per share versus 84 cents a share. So that's good in terms of the EPS. Uh, now the revenue was 1.10 billion and 1.10 billion was expected in terms of revenue. So revenue was not a beat, was not a miss. Earnings per share was a 27% beat. Uh, they are expecting to do about $4.37 billion of revenue this year, um, which is, you know, a little bit of reduction from the $4.54 billion analyst average, but not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Now, their forecast implies a 5% revenue growth in the fiscal fourth quarter. That That's not good one would argue. They have about 209,000 enterprise customers up from 204,000. Uh, they have been heightened deal scrutiny for new business, especially because the pandemic is over. Remember, they went up 300% uh, in the, at the time of the pandemic from, Octo from, from March 2020 all the way up to October 2021. That's amazing. But the problem is like, you know, Zoom at $500 when the whole world was working from home. Yeah, it mattered. But now it's like, does it really matter that much uh, for, for people to be working from home or for that to be the biggest concern. Let's get into uh, Zoom CFO Kelly Steckelberg breaking down Q3 earnings, and then we'll talk more about Kathy Wood's projections for this company. See, the company's CFO Kelly Steckelberg. Uh, the company, uh, I should say, the stock down about seven percent in the pre-market. Uh, Kelly, and I don't know if you had a chance to hear what Jim Cramer just uh, had to say, but basically, you know, what do you have to do at this point to to get that kind of growth? What does that look like in your mind? So we're really focusing on continuing this transition from being this killer meetings app that everybody knows and loves to becoming a unified communications platform that serves all of your collaboration needs. And we are now remember, she has to say this, right? So yes, that is their mission to become this unified communication platform. But I mean, you've got to do something bigger than video because video chatting is not worth 40, 50 billion dollars, right? It's just, it's just, it's just not that big of a market. So they obviously have to go for this larger vision. That's what Facebook's doing with the metaverse to justify them to continue to keep growing. Uh, but the question is if that vision actually exists for something like Zoom. Well, on our way to doing that, we have Zoom One, which is our bundled product, which we saw strength in the quarter. We're thrilled about the performance of Zoom Phone. We also have Zoom Contact Center, which is a very early product. And a few weeks ago at Zoomtopia, our hybrid users conference, we introduced integrations of mail and calendar, as well as our own mail and calendar services. So all of this together is creating a platform where our users and our customers can spend their day. And that's really what we're, we're focused on. Um, you know, happy to talk about the results of the quarter, but for the future of the company, the platform strategy is really it. Let me just, let me just dig into the platform strategy though, which is to say that clearly uh, folks, and we've seen this when Slack was competing with, you know, Microsoft Teams and the like, because Teams was already integrated, it made it harder for, for companies like a Slack. And the question is, can you being in the position you're in today, integrate the calendar and the email piece easier than somebody else can integrate the video conferencing piece? Well, the now, this is a good question because Microsoft Teams obviously gets to bundle their video product with their Slack, te uh, you know, chat product. That's what kind of guts Zoom because it's like you're getting so much from this versus just a standalone app. So let's, so let's see if, you know, Zoom can replicate those offerings. The great thing about our platform is it's very intuitive and people really love it. So adding on email and calendar, we're not asking them to change their service, but just making it easier for them so they don't have to do so much context shifting during the day, that toggle tax. And it, it's great. I love it. It really incorporates it so that you can spend your day in Zoom. I mean, I spend my day in Zoom, of course, as it is, but this just increases the opportunity to make all of our customers more efficient, which we're listening to them. And, and this is one of the requests we had from them. And we really hear from them they're very excited about it and then another thing you just focused on is chat you know we have zoom chat which is a persistent chat and it's something that we've really been focusing on as it is also an important part of our long-term strategy and it really creates an opportunity again for customers to communicate internally you know and externally and i'm excited to say we have a fortune 10 customer of ours using that product so 
it's really becoming a more important part of our overall portfolio strategy. That is a good, I mean, I didn't know they had a Fortune 10 company. It was one of the top 10 companies in the world using the chat product, I mean, versus Slack or Microsoft Teams. So uh, that's not horrible. That's not the worst. Kelly, I do have a question about your results and specifically about your full year forecast, which makes certain assumptions. Um, one of the assumptions is that the enterprise side of the business will grow by about 20%. And I'm wondering if you could walk us through what you're seeing that gives you the confidence that that portion of the business, big companies, will, will, will increase their spend and or add accounts in this sort of economic environment when we're seeing layoffs. So we have two segments of our business. We have our online and our enterprise. And our enterprise has been the growth driver over the last several years. And what we've seen is that continue. We had 20% year over year growth in Q3. It's now 56% of our business. And we do see strength in renewals as you know, employers are really embracing flexible work, which means they need Zoom phone, they need Zoom meetings, they need Zoom rooms for when they do have employees in the office to make sure that is an inclusive experience for them. And as we're looking forward, we have a bundle Zoom One, which really provides our customers an easy way to buy those products to bring it together. And we've continued to see demand there. And when we look forward, we do see pipeline into Q4. And as we're planning for FY24, you expect that to continue as the flexible work is really not going away. Okay, so we got the argument. Uh, ultimately, her point is that it is uh, meaningful for us to be able to think about this product as more of a platform and enterprise is driving a lot of growth. Now, the problem here is the Kathy arguments, right? So Zoom, she, Kathy says, our model estimates that Zoom's market penetration increased from 8% in 2019 to 45% during the onset of the pandemic in 2020, and then slipped back to 43% during the reopening in 2021. So they say it's a uh, projections call for total unique Zoom users to rise from 212 million currently to 291 million. So they're factoring in about 70 million more people using this product over the next five years. The third valuation factor in their model is that 50% of the user base will be generating revenue, meaning by 2026, at least one party in any Zoom call will be a paying user with enhanced Zoom functionality. Right now, a Zoom call is free to use uh, between two people for 40 minutes, uh, or for, it's actually unlimited, but if you have more than two people, it's 40 minutes functionality. Now, I have a bunch of Zoom meetings where I have to have more people, so I, I pay the 15 bucks a month. So ARC is estimating that 50% of the user base, you're talking about more than 100 million people, will be paying these $15 a month to be able to get the functionality that comes down to Zoom. The revenue per user based on their AI powered analytics should increase productivity across knowledge workers. Knowledge workers are, you know, people that do things like myself who has a startup that's not like in some big enterprise. Um, the average paying user will spend $94 or 50% of the total cost of Zoom's core products and Zoom IQ and AI related products and services. These are the new types of products that'll be implemented into the actual uh, platform itself, which is you have calendar, you have chat, you have potentially some AI models that allow them to integrate you to become more productive. That's what the CFO kept saying is like, how can we get people to be more and more productive? ARC's price target for Zoom is $1,500 per share in 2026. Of course, there's a wide window of possibilities. Our bear and bull cases suggest that Zoom could be worth $700 and $2,000 per share in 2026, respectively. So even the worst case scenario for the stock has it going up nearly seven times from where it is above right now. Seven, that's a seven bagger. That's why I wanted to do this video because if we're wrong, this is a seven bagger we're missing out on, which is why Zoom has been so, because I love the product, but I'm like a seven bagger? Am I, am I really missing out on a seven bagger? And then outside of that, it's 40% higher than its highs in the 2020 pandemic when Zoom was the best thing since sliced bread. That means they would have to be doing about $45 billion in the bear case of revenue to justify that multiple or 70 billion in the $1,500 case. I just, I don't... The company's brought in $4 billion this year. If, I mean, or they will in 2022. They're growing 5% quarter over quarter. Their enterprises, whatever, you know, like, yes, they're gonna introduce some new products. You still gotta beat off Microsoft. Like, it's not that it's not possible. It's that $70 billion is a lot of money. And just Amazon for, for contact, Google for contact did $90 billion. Apple, or sorry, Google did 70 billion last quarter. Apple did 90 billion. So Google did a little bit under a billion a day. Apple did a billion dollars a day. Think about how many people use Google and Apple and then compare that to what Zoom is. For Kathy Wood to suggest that Zoom will reach $70 billion in value, it's or in revenue, it's just, it's a bit confusing and I'm trying to figure out their model. And yes, I get like half of the percentage of the user base will pay all that stuff. But like, you've got to get that revenue more than just from users. You've got to get it from enterprises. As the CFO said, the growth driver is the enterprise. And I don't know if the enterprise is going to drive this. I think Zoom can be very successful. I think it can be a great company. I think it's, it is already is a great company. It can grow. 
I don't know if it's growing to $1,500 a share in the next five years. Because if it is, that's going to be one of the biggest stocks I missed out on. Because I see it, you know, I was told, hey, it's going to go to 1500 Kathy told me. And if I don't buy it, then, and it goes to 1500 it's going to suck. I just don't see how that kind of happens. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit hard to understand how they ultimately get there at the end of the day given the growth that's going on right now. But maybe they do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about Zoom. Do you own Zoom stock? Do you think Kathy's model makes any sense? Thanks so much for listening and watching. I'll see you in the next one.